We're here to make portraits. What's a portrait? Who can say? See it as this up and... Claudette sees it as this part of the body up. Oh, putting on your best look for <laughs> the world at large. Can yes. Yeah. Okay, somebody over there had something. Karen. The Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa. The most the most famous portrait, right, in the world. And why is it so famous? Because you don't know exactly what she's thinking. It, make, it stimulates like your ideas as to what she might be thinking. Um, if she's happy, she's sad, mysterious, mystery. Yeah, it's inscrutable. We really don't know what the Mona Lisa is thinking, which intrigues us, and so therefore there's a dialogue, right? Um, usually in an art museum, they say any great work of art, you get two seconds. You know, you look at this one, mm -hmm, one, two, one, two, one, two, and you've seen the whole uh, Degas show, right? But with a portrait, I think we have an opportunity to linger a little longer because we know some things about it, but we don't know so much more. It's inscrutable, like the Mona Lisa. What else about a portrait? Yeah. Is a portrait always a person? What else could it be? An animal. A portrait could be an animal. It's not an action thing. It's not an action thing. No, it could be. I kind of think it could. Do y'all think it could be? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, today, today we're making still portraits. But a portrait could be an action thing. Sure. Um, portrait of the artist as a young man. Anyone ever read that book? Yes. Okay, that's an action portrait, right? It's there is a still portrait in the book, but it's really a a, um, See, they, they're a, even making portrait inside a lot, lot of portraits, so that's action. Yes, and often you've seen a contact sheet, which is actually, of course, you don't see them anymore because no one's using film. <laughs> but when we used film, and I still do, um, if you print all of your film from, from one roll on a sheet, that's a contact sheet. And there are many artists in the world who use the whole contact sheet as a portrait or as an expression. So it doesn't have to be one picture. Um, could you make a portrait of Edna's pen? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm confused because I would say I can take a picture of Edna's pen. Oh, portrait, the difference between a picture portrait. and a portrait is what? I could take a photo of her thing and because it's not a live thing, to me a portrait has to be alive mm -hmm. with expression and... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is there a way to it give a pen be. expression? Yeah, it's not. It's interesting. One time I took a photo class, and one of my assignments was to take an ordinary object, like a pen, and make 100 portraits of it. Okay, you can do the first five, right? <laughs> then it gets a little hard. By the time you get to 10 or 20, has anyone ever done anything like that? You're starting to get a little zany up here. You're getting crazy in your mind. You're thinking, what else could I do with it? Oh, I could put it on my head and take a picture. I could tuck it under my arm. I could stick it in a bowl of sugar. I could put crazy light on it. I could put it on top of something and have a context of this against that. So once you get going, that makes, to me, a, a picture become a portrait. Why? Because I'm saying something about the pen. It's no longer an inanimate object, it's an object in the world that relates to other things. Give me a word to describe this woman. Stern, she is stern. Sad. Sad, this woman is sad. Strong. Strong. How do you know those things? We don't know her. She's showing it by her expression. Stoic. Mm-hmm. I think the black and white actually helps that impression come across. If she were in bright pink, I might not feel she's as stoic for some reason. That's me. Uh, she's lifting her chin a little bit. Uh-huh. She's definitely serious. It's a, it's a very, she, does she want you to, to have a feeling about her? I think she does. In most portraits, there is collaboration. That's the difference between a portrait and a snapshot. Um, there's collaboration. Did the photographer and this woman have a conversation? They did, they did. Um, she wasn't just caught by surprise. And the photographer, I'm sure, was saying, 
talking to her and and asking her questions and pulling something from her. You know, back in the at the beginning of portraits, they looked like this, right? And if you think of daguerreotypes during the Civil War when people sat still for I don't know, long time, 10 minutes more maybe to have a still photograph that their loved one could take with them into battle. And so it was a very much a collaboration. She is beautiful. She is, what, Sheree? Pretty. Pretty to beautiful. What else? She's young. She's dreaming. She has a poetic reverence for me. She is far away in her thought. She knows she's pretty. She knows she's pretty. I think she's a good makeup artist. <laughs> that is always true. Okay, how about this one? I'm going to hold something behind it. That'll help. Sassy. Sassy. She is sassy. Sexy. Sexy. And even though it's a still picture, there's a lot of action going on here for me. A lot of action, right. A lot of attitude. A lot of attitude, yes. Which is a little different from, oh, well, there's attitude too, from these guys. Um, these are some of my very favorite portraits. I love these. <laughs> and I like to think of this as sort of like a contact sheet in that, I mean, you could do this today. If you wanted to make a series of pictures with one expression or every expression you can think of, and then in the end put them together like that, that might be a really fun way to um, go about a multifaceted view of yourself. But what I'm going to ask you to do today, well, first of all, I'm not taking any pictures. I'm not making any pictures today. You are. <laughs> Ta-da. So you're going to be the photographer at some point, and you'll be the person posing for the photograph at some point. And then we'll all switch places so everybody will have a chance to do both. And remember, it's a collaboration. So if you're the person behind the camera, you are making suggestions and directing the person there to do what you want them to do. And if you're over there, you're also using your creativity and ideas to say, I want to try this or I want to try that. And I would like you to start by thinking of a word that describes you. Now, the word could be a word today, like, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm really feeling silly and happy to be here, I'm feeling creative. Or it could be, I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling clever, I'm feeling complicated. It can be anything you want to start with. And then we'll together try to find a way to express that. So we're going to be playing with it. We're going to be silly. We're going to be laughing a lot. Everybody can't be doing this at the same time. So we're going to divide you in three groups, four, four, and three people. And the two groups who are not here will be down there doing a, uh, yeah, doing okay. something Edna has okay. in mind. We've got paper and we've got uh, magazines that you brought with portraits particularly in mind. And I'd like to invite you to do a self-portrait from images you find in the magazine. That may be just color. It may just be different shapes. It may be actual images that, uh, that speak to you about yourself. And, and again, playful in this. Uh, don't overthink it, I guess is what yeah. I want to say. Play. Yeah, play. Yeah. Fun. And then also <laughs> to write about what you've done with the image, or you can write beforehand. Um, if you're writing with the image in front of you, one of the things you can do is just describe it. Give the, you know, what's on this paper. Just describe that. Or feelings may come up that you would, mm -hmm. you would use. Um, and then the other piece would be to write before you do the portrait about yourself and see if in words you can give a portrait. Of you yourself. might find your word from that writing. Or if you've already know what your word is that you want to start with, you might write about that word. What is that part of you like? Mm -hmm. 
If I'm silly, what is that silly part of me and what, what do I do that's silly? And if you start with the word, that might be what you're looking for in the magazines mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. How would that describe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also the images may give you the word. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. The title of the workshop caught my attention for a couple different reasons. I'm real big on being seen as I want to be seen, and that may be different than how somebody else sees you, or perhaps the people where you work have one image of how you are, your family has another image, but when you do workshops like this, it gives you an opportunity for you to project how you want to be seen. So that was my first reason, and my second reason was, uh, based on my own prognosis, Basically, I'm about almost four and a half years beyond what was expected. So it's kind of my way of saying, here I am, see, I'm still being seen even after all these years. So I had a very short, narrow prognosis. Um, and this is kind of the opportunity to sort of say, ha, I got this one. And now I've got it captured on film. So here I am. I actually had a similar experience with another center uh, that did more stiff, more portrait. This was more fun, this was more open and free. Um, the way they uh, had you think about it in terms of using a word to help you think about what you wanted to project, that was a different idea than what I experienced before. So this one was actually a lot of fun. And I, you know, just watching the other uh, participants, you could sort of help coach them, you know, and, and make faces and tell them the word and encourage them to be the, the thing that they're telling you because sometimes the word they're telling you isn't what they're really projecting and you know it's, it's collaborative they put you in a group and then your group can kind of help coach that and bring out the best of how you are to be seen to others. I picked the word sassy and uh, the sort of the project lead had shown some pictures before we actually got up there and when she showed that one picture that's when the word popped into my head so I wanted to kind of have a little fun with it and the word does kind of help format how you're going to be seen um, and how you're going to be captured and so it was helpful to me to sort of have that prompt at the beginning of the words. I think we all grow up with different experiences about being seen and we're usually seen if we do something the parents don't approve of, or if it's something that people are really proud of you for, then you're seen. But the, the everyday person that you are and the, the is a little bit more difficult, and it's not usually what you do when someone takes a photograph. When I think of our family photographs, those are when it's a special occasion. You know, it's when you're, everybody's at the beach, or it's at a wedding, or it's at Christmas time with all of the tinsel and the bright lights. And so what today people have done is think of themselves in connection, particularly with a word, and, and to try to express what that word means to them in the way that they look. It's been a great experience, and you've seen all of the interaction going on with people. I think that's the other thing, is the fact that it's not the professional photographer who's doing it. It's a peer, and they encourage each other. It's just fun, for one thing. Lots of fun. And not everybody has fun having their pictures taken. Yeah. In fact, there was one person who was always the one taking the pictures. And she felt like there needed to be some pictures of her that the children would have her have. And, and so that's why she came. A lot of times you're very critical of your own pictures. So I think the fact that it's gone from that word to trying to express something with the image somehow makes it more pleasing when they get the image. Yeah.